This is a good day. I just want you to know, Biggs, I don't normally have balloons. This yeah, is a this is a 20th anniversary reasonable doubt oh, celebration that okay. we're having in the room today. Wow, I didn't know. And it's also a celebration because it's my first time ever in life interviewing mm. Biggs. You know I'm all about marketing. Where's my logo? Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, really? Out the gate? It's criticism? <laughs> out the gate? So, of course, for those of you who might have just, you might be seven years old and mm -hmm. not aware, uh... Kareem Biggs Burke, one third of uh, the co-founders of Rockefeller Records. Yep. Am I getting the introduction, the low, in the yeah, title that, right? That sounds right. Arguably, I was thinking about this on the way in today. Like, like, do you think it's the most important rap lab, rap is label ever? I think so. Ever. Yeah. I was trying to think of mm -hmm. like the comparables, like mm -hmm. Death Row, Let Me Cash Money. Mm -hmm. Who else? Bad Boy. Yeah. Um, where do you hold it? I mean, obviously you hold it as. Well, I hold this at number one because, it, you know, what we did beyond music mm -hmm. and the trickle down effect, um, you know, to be able to build all these different businesses and things like that. The trickle down effect is so crazy. So yeah. there's this merch for the celebration of the 20th anniversary of Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. And when you see the family tree line, please, Maritza, get a close up of this. So there's Dame. There's Biggs in his funny little hat. <laughs> Jay also funny little hat. And then when you look down, it's like everybody from Cam to Beanie Siegel, Kanye West, Memphis Bleak, Jim Jones, Jewels, Freeway, Rihanna, J. Cole, and how it all, everything kind of yeah. just evolved from there. Even what Kanye has now become and yeah. the empire that he's built exactly. comes from, yeah, you know, doubt. and yeah. having, a, having an outlet and, yeah. and a break. A lot of people are upset with me because they didn't they're not on that shirt. But uh, there's two I was thinking about that too. There's more people on <laughs> yeah. should be on the shirt. Part two. Part two of the shirt, of mm -hmm. the back. And it's not even just about the people that directly like you could musically mm -hmm. line them up, but it's just about the influence of the culture, right? It's yeah, like because that's that's actually where the idea came from. Um when I was thinking about the reasonable doubt family tree. It was about all the people that's in power right now mm -hmm. while interns. <laughs> I know everybody. So I'm signed to Rock Nation, right? And so yeah. like half of Rock Nation I had known since yeah. back then. Like Shock is president. Mm -hmm. Um I mean everybody, even Christy's yeah. back. Yeah, Christy's back. We got Lenny over there. Lenny S. Yeah. Um who else is original crew of course, over there? Tata. Tata Emery. Yeah. Beehive. OG. Mm -hmm. Was OG beginning beginning uh, or he not came the later? Beginning, beginning. He came a little later. But he was pretty early yeah. in the game. Mm -hmm. Pretty great. What a legacy, right? Definitely. You must be so proud of that. Yeah, I was thinking about that on the way over here. Just that, uh, you know, when I think about all these different people and what they're doing right now, because uh, I speak to them often, Emmanuel mm -hmm. uh, over at Atlantic, Shari Bryant. Now mm. she's an executive at Atlantic. Shari was an intern? She was an assistant, yeah. She worked over wow. there. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I never, and it's like funny because out of all the years, all the times I've ever interviewed Jay, all the times I've ever interviewed Dame, mm -hmm. You were always the I, I I just until recently have gotten a chance to like really get to know you. I feel like mm -hmm. back in the day you were always so like you played the back. Yeah, and um, I mean it was a part of my nature. Uh, you know, I was real standoff standoffish. I didn't mm -hmm. trust people. I didn't. You know, this was a it was also a, because Dame was doing enough. Yeah, but for I'm saying everybody. for this it was more <laughs> or less a business move for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really something that I really enjoyed. Um, I mean, I enjoyed the success, you know, and the fruits of what came from it, mm. but I, I love business. So it wasn't one particular thing that I was really happy about. It was always about the next thing and trying to push the envelope. Yeah. But when, but you would, when you say that, and I think of somebody who's like only about the money and only like cutting the checks, but you, and so I always kind of thought that initially mm. that that was your role, but that's really not true. Like you were in the studio, yeah. you were the ones, you were the one to say, we need to sign Kanye. Yeah, well, um, I I said we we all said we would sign Kanye. Just that Dame thought that he would put him on a on a group album, mm. and thought the group would kind of break Kanye. I seen a genius in what he was doing. Um, I actually picked the singles. I had the radio department go after it at radio, and I did Kanye's whole first project from A to Z. Also, with the young what guy, year was that? Two thousand two or one. What two. was Kanye like in two thousand two? Um, not much different. Really? Um, yeah, he was real animated, and a lot of times, like, we would play music in the studio, Kanye would jump on a console and start rapping. <laughs> I mean, he was real animated, so right. 
I mean, I love that. You know, and did he, he have a, that like type of vision that like he you, definitely had the vision? Yeah, yeah. He had the he had the name for his next three albums. And did he keep them? Was it the same? Yeah. Or did he change them? No, Kept them? the same. Yeah. I mean, even to believe in that. <laughs> that's why I say that about Rockefeller too. Beyond the specific artist, it's like the culture that you guys mm -hmm. have influenced. I don't know. Even somebody like me, who was on the radio and coming up and coming in of age, there was like an independent spirit and a, like yeah. a belief in mm -hmm. self and almost like a. a I mean, some might have called it arrogance, but it was a confidence that's like contagious that makes you when you go out. Like I was affected by that. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people from the culture were, you know, affected by that. Yeah, um, I guess that came from doing well before we got in the music business. So, you know, right. once we were in, it was, you know, it, it wasn't really nothing new to make millions of dollars. We yeah. were in a good place before that. So we yeah, always but you bet on yourself too. You put your money up on yourself. We right? bet on ourselves. Vegas Jones. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Shout out to Anne Marie. Yeah. Um. So here we are, twenty years later, after Reasonable Doubt, and where are you with it? Like, where, where are, are you still involved in anything with Jay or? Um. Well, you know, we still own Reasonable Doubt together. Mm -hmm. We have some projects that we do together. Um. Some things we own. A lot of things we do separately. Mm -hmm. But um. Right now, I'm um more in the apparel business. Mm hmm. So fourth of November. Um. I know it looks good. Yeah, which is my new denim brand. Um. That's really, really taken off, and because of that and starting to celebrate this 20 year anniversary when we had this um this event in LA that a lot of people came out and show love uh reasonable doubt um which is turning to rock 96 is becoming a, its own brand of itself mm. so we have a lot of things that's going on with that as well so mm -hmm. um so that's the focus now yeah is the clothing mm -hmm. and you're going to be out in your face and doing interviews and appearances uh, and stuff like this you're gonna be in the ads and what are you no do? i'm <laughs> definitely not gonna be in the, <laughs> not ads. Gonna be in the ads are you gonna put anybody in the ads you, it's uh, like well we, we're not really talking about that right now it's uh, it's kind of like an organic um growth right now yeah and people like that more mm -hmm. so you know the gift of discovery and people finding new songs new brands and they like to be the first on it mm -hmm. so right now it's just blowing up on its own i was uh, um i was just thinking about the first of all how long have you been home i've been out uh going on it's about 18 months i can't imagine because then you were reflecting like 20 years and how mm -hmm. much money you guys made and how yeah. you were living and your lifestyle to then have to go to prison yeah all the reflection that's all you do is reflect. what <laughs> not that but just you was probably spoiled you probably lived a certain way I used to a certain spoiled. very spoiled and then that all gets ripped away yeah. like what was the biggest surprise or what was like most shocking about that transition? Um, having to deal with authority. Mm. So I never, uh, well, I had a job once when I was 14. I worked at uh, Summer Youth for like two weeks. How'd that go? I was insane. No, the guy no. asked me to uh, clean the parking lot and I had whipped out some money and I was like, man, I'm not cleaning anything. <laughs> Did you throw it at him? No, but okay. I quit. <laughs> So that was the only job I ever had. So w once you go into prison, you know, you're and well, in federal prison, you're kind of forced to have a job. You yeah. Know? And um, what'd you have to do in there? Uh, first, it was uh, working in sanitation. <gasps> and, uh, yeah, exactly. Which was crazy for me. Um, mm -hmm. I got out of that in about three weeks. Wow. And, um, and then I worked in a gym. And that's how... Got I kind of evolved yeah, into, I see. into the new big. Because you're super <laughs> lean and fit now. And you're maintaining yeah. it since you've been out too, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. Wow. But I'm sure there's a lot of reflection that happens and change that happens. Yeah, and a lot of reflection. And you think about everything, where your life was, where it is now, um, about all your relationships. That was the most important thing. And then... Um, the things that happen to you once you get in prison, right? The the relationships that's lost. And you start reflecting on that, you oh, know. Oh, who's not around. Yeah, the family, you know, the friends and who came around when times were good. But, you know, now right. I'm in prison. Where's the support? Mm. Um, so you think a lot about that as well. It and and that really messes with you. It cleans up, but it cleans up your plate a little it bit. It definitely though. cleans up the plate. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you mm -hmm. got clarity. Now you're probably, you, yeah. you probably got more solid people around you. 100%. Yeah. I'm surprised by that because I'm sure you're a good judge of character that mm -hmm. you even w w had to be surprised well, by a few family. people. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about family. You know, you it's, you know, you know, don't even think about them turning their back. Yeah. You know, some of the things that happen, you know, people stealing money, stealing jewelry, uh, you know, things like while that. While you're locked up? While I'm locked up. Good yeah. Lord, mm -hmm. man. I know Damon said something about that Kanye should have showed you more love while you were locked it up. It wasn't. And, yeah, he did say that. I never really understood that. Um, you know, Dame was talking. 
saying that artists should be. I, when we signed these artists, that that was a business deal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't not, a favor. It wasn't okay. I'm gonna sign you and look. If I go to prison in five years, you need to be there. Send me comments. Yeah. Out. So <laughs> the way he was saying it, like you guys need to give him money and send him things. It wasn't like I was in need for that. Right. You know, uh, you know the things I'm talking about is people, you know, calling my wife or reaching out to my son. You know, things that things that, that matter. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. But not necessarily the artists. Right. Because that's yeah. like a business transaction exactly. to an extent, right? Yeah. Um. And then the fa- I just saw this because you did this special the other day on TV, and I didn't realize I had known it was it was like a weed thing, but I didn't realize, you know, because weed is like legal in so many places now. Yeah. And so I was thinking like, yo, he was just a visionary. He was trying yeah. to get his dispenser. Soldier at war. Yeah, he was like a visionary, <laughs> but it just wasn't legal yet. Like he just jumped the gun. Because you know, Snoop's about to make a ton of money doing yeah. the same thing that got you locked up, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. We got to change these laws, man. Yeah. There's yeah. so many people sitting inside prison right now that somebody is doing exactly the same thing, mm-hmm. making a lot of money outside legally at the same time. Exactly. That's insane. Yeah. That has to make you mad. Or do, are you, do you um, feel like, are you on no, like... No, not now because truthfully, I think that it was the best thing to happen to me. For you personally. For me personally. Right. For a lot of reasons. I think that was just um, the journey that I was on and... Sometimes the journey is uh, more important than a destination. Yeah. So what I learned on that journey, um, the things that it cleared up, you know, the shaking the tree and seeing a lot of leaves fall off and um, seeing who's there for you and mm. kind of having a clean slate when I came out. It was, you know, as I look back, it was the best thing that happened to me because mm. I was all over the place. Were you? Yeah. I never would have guessed that. Yeah. Your personality doesn't like. Yeah. I was all over the place. Like, what do you mean? I mean, just. You know, just taking advantage of that lifestyle mm. and, you know, not like Trump, but right. <laughs> right. not grabbing, grabbing yeah, not, whatever you want. Not, do, yeah, point. not doing any of that. But, <laughs> that sounds nuts. Um, uh, just not, you know, treating the people the, the way they should. Yeah. How do you do you ever feel like I don't know. I always have this like dream of right. I know that it's everybody's evolved and everybody's in a place. But like every time there's like a 10 year anniversary or a tw- now is the 20 mm-hmm. year anniversary. You know, the 10 year uh, reasonable doubt anniversary. Jay did this show. I think it was at um, the Beacon. At the, um, I'm not sure. It was the one. Of, or something, right? I think it it was. the. Uh, um, no, he did a 10th anniversary oh, yeah, 10th show. Time. Got yeah. dressed up and oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. did I the album. He performed there. the full album. Mm-hmm. And I remember being there that night going, how amazing if Dame comes out with a bottle of champagne <laughs> doing his little dance. Like, just for that moment, just yeah. to see, mm-hmm. just to have that moment back. But that will, that will never happen, probably in real life. I wouldn't say never. Really? You know? Yeah, everybody, you know, from what I know, everybody's in a good place. The last time. That's good. While I was in, and Dame showed me pictures when he was with Dame, I mean with Jay, mm-hmm. when they went out to um, one of Jay's shows and mm-hmm. brought his daughter. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so it's just, you know, when everybody get together, it's all fun. Mm. A lot of people ask, what will happen when you finally see Jay or Dame? And I said, we're probably going to laugh. And that's exactly what happened. Mm. Like, we just seen each other and just bust out laughing. Because mm. yeah. there's too much history, right? Yeah, definitely. How long had it been since you'd seen Jay? Jay, uh, at the time, because I actually seen him at Kanye's, uh, his listening concert in Madison Square Garden. Uh-huh. And before that, I want to say five six years wow yeah. i didn't realize it was that long mm-hmm. wait so were you guys not good for you guys were not like not good for a while um well it was a period of time that we weren't speaking but we were you know we were good probably three or four years before i went into prison but we were just all um, doing different things yeah wow and now and now you guys are all kind of yeah definitely there's um, so much we, history we, we, we're great you know yeah. uh, he came to la to the pop-up shop we went to a screening afterward um, I speak to him probably every week. Uh, That's good. Yeah. That's dope. We talked a couple of days ago. He was asking me for a jacket that he seen. <laughs> yeah, I was with him. <laughs> oh, somebody very close to me had one of these jackets on, this very fine, reasonable doubt. Yeah, uh, same and we saw Jay because we were at the title concert. Mm-hmm. And Jay was like, I don't even have one of those jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you need to holler at Biggs. Yeah. He said he had seen him, though, that you had sent him all like yeah. the looks and stuff like mm-hmm. that, which is dope. So what is this project? So these are just like, so this merch is like from, you can get it at the pop-up shops? Yeah. The, is that the, like people can get it online too, or is it? Yeah, the, uh, we have uh, rock96.com, um, which is launching today, and people can actually buy the clothes there, and it's going to be available in the pop-up shop. Got it. And then whose company is that? That's just yours. Um, that's ours. All three of you. Mm-hmm. 
because everybody still kind of has yeah, owns yeah, the yeah, album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So everybody's friendly and happy about that. I'm sure. <laughs> Nobody has to be so <laughs> be like, yo, yeah. imaging, like, licensing, mm-hmm. let's get all that correct. <laughs> <laughs> I love the one. There's a t-shirt that has um, the Mary. It has, um, in, not in my lifetime. Oh, can't knock the hustle. Yeah, can't knock the hustle. Can't knock the album. It's so out. dope. This yeah. is featuring Mary J. Blige on it. That yeah. T-shirt is dope. So all like memorabilia. Yeah, we have that, but we had you know some other things I wanted to get you. We actually making girl tees too. Oh, good. So we I have, like boy tees better though. Yeah, well, but um, <laughs> you know like crop tops. And yeah, we got some women's size because a lot of girls have been asking, Are "Y'all gonna make anything for us?" But there's some uh, specific items that we made around songs. Okay. So there's gonna be some hoodies and fleece that's going to be you know you look at it you're going to have to figure out what the lyrics are from that song Uh and what the design is all about that's dope we have about six of those exclusive items as well and we're doing some high-end items so we have uh this japanese um designer he's a lifestyle specialist and editor at 411 magazine Mm -hmm. which is this um, um really good japanese magazine he did a collaboration too and then we have some collaborations that we did with fancy so there's i mean there's going to be product there that's probably $2,000, seven, $800 and things like that. And then we'll have some, you know, some other t-shirts and affordable things. for everybody. That make, that just makes people want it more. Yeah. It's so much history, such a dope album it, and not, not really appreciated at the time when it came out. Yeah. I don't think anybody did. It was, you know, we, even with us, I mean, we, we was happy that we made something, you know, that people gravitated towards, but we didn't know that the impact it would have had until years later right and but you knew you can, it was dope you, yeah we knew it was dope and then you can really appreciate it like even right now that's those are the songs i still work out to well to reasonable doubt yeah really yeah i call it um i have this playlist called reasonable gangster so i mix all american gangster and reasonable doubt and i just put it on shuffle and that's for the gym yeah i would think that you'd be so tired of those songs nah. really never yeah. those, that gets me hyped because it brings me back mm. you know right there and at, at that time yeah you know with us just laughing eating drinking and just having a lot of fun so it's all good memories yeah what do you want like what do you think about like your legacy what will your legacy be in the game like um as far as music is the impact that we have on uh the people that was around us mm-hmm. so it's no not, but i mean you you know what me. i'm saying like that's you what I'm specifically about. yeah well that well that's what i'm saying for yeah. people to look at me and yeah. be able to follow in that footsteps yeah and th- and those footsteps because it's how you treat the people around you. So a lot of times, like when I go out, you know, like I said, I brought stuff for everybody here. They don't think about the interns, the people in the background, and the people who help you get on, a lot of times on that pedestal or wherever you at, mm-hmm. um, and, and to be successful. So I always pay homage to that. Mm-hmm. So I want the legacy to be those people who worked under us to be able to grow and then have their own businesses because they seen exactly how we carried everybody. It was always a family atmosphere and to treat everybody, you know, right and build relationships, mm. not on transactions. Mm. That was the one thing that a lot of uh, uh, deals were done before just on transaction. But Rockefeller was all relational. I heard paper bags, too. Definitely a lot of paper bags. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mary told that story once to me that she got paid in a paper bag of cash mm-hmm. for uh, Can't Knock the Hustle. Yeah. It was funny because <laughs> a- afterwards she left and I, I had... I, I left behind her. Mm-hmm. So we, I just happened, we both making two rights, and she skidded off, thought somebody was following Trying to her. rob her? Yeah, <laughs> and called Jay. So, Jay <laughs> so the next day we found out it was me. <laughs> He's like, oh, you yeah, trying to rob me. You trying was, to give me the bag and then take my bag? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Mary. That mm-hmm. totally sounds like Mary. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you think people miss about that album, even all these years later? Um... Not to say miss, because I think a lot of people now, when they look at that album, see the impact that it had and where Jay was at lyrically mm-hmm. and sonically, how the album was, right? The producers that came around it and taking a lifetime, you know, up to that point being 25 years to, to make that album, to put his whole, you know, all of his experiences in it. So I don't think right now is th- anything that people miss. It'd probably be the younger generation if they yeah. go back and they could compare it to some of the stuff that's done now. Yeah, you can't call yourself a hip hop fan no matter how old you are. I mean, if you're 18, 19, mm-hmm. if you call yourself a hip hop fan and not have at least gone to listen to that album, like yeah. you're doing yourself a disservice, <laughs> a severe disservice. Legendary stuff. All right, tell them where they could get the stuff again. 
of rock 96. You got to get in promo R- mode, bitch. Yeah, you ROC. Know how this works. ROC 96. And then and go to Instagram at The Rock 96. There's not going to be a show, huh? Yeah. There's no show. There's no 20th <laughs> anniversary show. Um, Not not yet. Maybe the 25th. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And it could be streamed untitled. Look at all how this all works yeah. out. Because there, there's, I mean, there's so much that we're doing. It's also. Um, I think uh eleven fifteen November fifteenth. We've we're also dropping fourteen stores mm. exclusive. So I had the fourth of November designers design capsules around each song. So each store is gonna have something. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and it's fourteen top specialty stores all around the country. So, so what's the one that's in New York to this, this week? Is, this is the pop up shop. Uh huh. But this is gonna be something special coming. So every month we got something that's dropping that's gonna be a little different. Okay. So. For New York, this is all about D and D Studio recreating that mm-hmm. experience, bringing the actual board back that we recorded on and uh, premiere used. That and, Brook, uh, Brooklyn's finest was yeah. recorded on. But in in November fifteenth, we're yeah. doing something that's going to be all around the country. Dope. So we have fourteen stores that's all going to have listening parties all around the country to celebrate. To listen to the stuff on the. They're gonna, they're going to have listening parties for the album. Uh, they're going to be selling all exclusive. So for somebody to get all 14 items, they have to go all around the country. Mm-hmm. So we got like Vinnie Styles here in New York. That's going to have Brooklyn Finest and Concepts. That's I love this. Feeling it. That's my one of my favorites. Yeah. I always love that song. That whole album is amazing. Yeah. So for you, Clothing Lines next. and Yeah. Clothing. Do you feel like you have to chase a success that you've already had? Like, do you feel like you have to like do that again? Or, uh, or something as epic? Not really. Um, I think that what we did is um, kind of etched in history right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we created history. I don't think nobody could change that. But it's not about chasing the past. For me, everything was always pushing the envelope and doing something different. Um, like I did an interview yesterday, and a guy started talking about tech, and I started telling him about how I had a social network when Facebook only had 10,000 people, mm. how I had Armadale when nobody else was thinking about spirits. Baca, right. You know, mm-hmm. when we had Rock Sports, back in 98 you know those are all my ideas you know mm. the rock box we had an mp3 player when apple had their. i remember the rock box yeah when they had their second um mp3 player we had one and that was being sold in macy's wow so I, i'm always trying to look to see what's what's next what's different and try to do something before everybody else are you how do you how do you perceive like what jay's been able to do like i think it's amazing yeah right yeah. so I will, you know, and, and a lot of that I seen, you know, in prison. So to mm-hmm. see him kind of carry the torch of what we did and build this huge empire, you know, I'm really happy for him. I tell him all the time. It's like amazing to mm-hmm. witness, right? Yeah. I just ima- think of you, somebody who, you know, who was there the whole time to mm-hmm. see it, what that must feel like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then the replicate. You probably see your imprint on, Def- on well, all of that. He's replicating all the things that we did together. Yeah. Right? Do say, uh, the you know, the sporting agency mm-hmm. and title right is tech spirits right fashion all the same things you know so it's great some people might be salty about that probably yeah i don't doesn't bother me i'm happy for him That's happy for dame too he's doing he's doing great too he's doing things online yeah you know he has a dust gold poppetin he's doing back in spirits and he has a streaming service so. and he's like relentless mm-hmm. he will always work he yeah. will always yeah. find something mm-hmm. to, to get into it's amazing that you've been able to like you know, because those are such very different personalities. Never really yeah. surprising to me that they eventually would bump heads <laughs> <laughs> because it's, they were always so different. Yeah. But I feel like you kind of have managed to, I don't know. Yeah, I've probably been in the middle of that. Um, yeah. And but probably more like Dame because I'm from Harlem. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Dame grew up together since we were about 14 years old. Um, but probably started going back on the, you know, towards Jay, I'm saying as far as personality. Right. It's just you kind of, you grow out of a lot of stuff. You know, we're older now, so we don't think about the things that we did back then, trying to replicate it and do the business the way we did it back then. You mm. know, you kind of grow out of it. Mm. And on to the next. On to the next. Well, congratulations on everything. I can't wait to see the full line. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop by the pop-up shop for sure. Definitely. I love my jacket. Yeah. Look at my jacket. Yeah, we got DJ Premier spinning too. Yeah, so. of course you do. Yeah. What, how many premiere songs do you have? How many premiere songs are on Reasonable Doubt? Three. Th- three? Mm-hmm. Which ones? The Evils, Bring It On, Friend of Foe. Yeah. Oof, my favorite. Yeah. All right. Here's your assignment if you're 15 years old. 
Go listen to Friend or Foe, Reasonable <laughs> Doubt, immediately, right yeah. now. Stop what you're doing. I don't care if it's homework. Stop yeah. your homework. Yeah. Go listen to <laughs> Friend or Foe right now. Yeah, actually, any kids that come through the pop-up shop uh, that has a student ID, a college ID, we're going to give them a discount, too. Love that. Yeah. Dope. All right. Can we have a one-time, please, for Bigs for coming through today? 